What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Previous video, we did a build on this particular PC, the i5, or it's with the i7, 4790, and the 1070. And I had some temperature issues with the cooler that I was using. It did perfectly fine with everything else except for when the CPU is at 100% usage. On occasion, playing God of War, it would go up to 100% usage and the thermals were hitting 80 uh, up to 83 degrees Celsius, which is technically fine, but I really don't want them that high. So I am adding a ID cooling tower cooler, which is this one here. I'm gonna add that to it and that's going to, well, should take care of that problem. So we're gonna disassemble and I'm gonna install this and see how much of an improvement we have. We'll go ahead with the teardown. Another thing, as I had mentioned before, I was going to add a 500 gigabyte hard drive for extra storage, but I put a one terabyte Western Digital Blue in there instead. Okay. So this is going to be pretty quick. We'll have to get our graphics card and everything. All that stuff's going to have to be unplugged and we'll have to pull the motherboard back out so we can put the new brackets and everything for the, the ID cooling uh, tower cooler. And it's white. It's got a little bit of RGB also. I think it's going to match the aesthetic pretty well. I'm taking your graphics card out. There's a little tab right in there. Set the reach in, push that tab, make sure it's down, and then your card will come right out. Okay. Gotta go unhook all our wires again. It's kind of a pain, but. and get all our motherboard screws out. After I finish this build, I'll be selling it. I'm gonna try the, the new website it's called Jawa. It's recommended by a couple of other YouTubers. Pretty streamlined. I'll be able to put this, put the video links and everything for the YouTube channel on there, showing the actual build and all that. So I thought that was kind of neat. I'll do builds like this pretty regularly and uh, put them up for sale on there. So if you're ever interested in one of them, you can keep an eye out. If Java doesn't work out, then I'll just go with the eBay deal, but eBay, they charge over 12% for, I guess their, their standard fee. A selling fee is over 12%. And I think Jawa is three something percent or five something percent. So it's a lot better on there. It makes it a lot easier. And most of the time I just shipped one out and I didn't, uh, I didn't charge but $15 for shipping and it costs me $42 to ship the PC. So I always, always charge a lot less than 
than uh, really what I should, I guess. But I do this more for more for I guess a hobby and fun than anything else. I quite enjoy it. Get this old one off. There it goes. Push these little plugs back through. Okay, we finally got that thing out, which was a nightmare. Those little clear plastic clips. Do not like to let go. For anybody that's interested in this also, it's also got uh, addressable RGB. We won't be able to use that on this particular build, but the options there if you're interested in this cooler. Looks like also this one comes with extra retainers if you want to add another fan. It's standard heat pipe, copper, pretty good, I mean, four of them. So this should, uh, should cool really well. This cooler is also LGA 1700 compatible. Got our back plate put on. Okay, we'll get our little plate put in on here. So I put the spacers on, and this plate goes on. And with basically, I think anything besides LGA 1700 on this little plate, you have a little set of holes on the inside, and then you have some on the outside. Your this one, it, the LGA 1150, which what is what this is, LGA 1200, all those are going to be the inside hole. We're going to use some Corsair TM30 for our thermal paste this go around. And of course, everybody uses different techniques for applying their thermal paste. But just use the X. Now, you can see these studs here 
and they're going to line up for their holes. Then we have our screws here. We have the spring tension on them. Now we got them started. We'll tighten just a little bit on each side back and forth until we get it secured all the way down. That way it that way it secures it evenly. We don't want too much pressure on one side or the other going down. It could possibly damage the the CPU. And we'll just secure it down until both sides are snug. Okay, now we can put our fan on there. And so your IO is here and your IO shield. So this is going to be towards the back. And so we're going to have our fan pulling air from this way through towards the back. If you have an additional fan, you can put it on this side and also have it going the same, you know, pushing air the same direction. It's a what they push push pull configuration. All right, we got the motherboard all back together. Fan plugged in. Now we can put it back in the case. Now we got all our stuff hooked back up. HD audio, USB, it's for our power switch, reset switch. Got our SATA cables hooked back up for our SSD and our hard drive. It's our 24 pin for the motherboard. We have our CPU power back here. It's plugged in, just a four pin. And we have our fan hooked in and that runs this fan and this fan for that and then our other for the actual CPU fan is at the top of the motherboard and it's hooked up. Now we can put our graphics card back in. Okay, we have it back up and running. Now we're going to get into God of War and do a benchmark and see what kind of temperatures we get. Okay guys, we're back in God of War. We're gonna see how well our temperatures do with this. So we're pulling 100% CPU usage right now. And we'll watch our temperatures. Like I said before, with the previous cooler that I used, which I've used a cooler just like that one on an i3-10100F, and it works perfectly fine 
but I'm guessing that the 4790 gets a little a little hotter. Yeah, we're 54, 55 degrees at 100% usage. That's 30 degree difference. And the ambient temperature is about 75 degrees in my little studio. But this cooler is doing really good. So yeah, I just want to do a quick demonstration, pushing the CPU and show you the difference in the temperature. I know I didn't show it before, but it was hitting 83, up to 83 when it was at 100. So, and that was with the, I had the, the fan as fast as it could go. But yeah, it makes a big difference. So this, with this cooler on here, this CPU will most likely it will never see 60 degrees Celsius. This also shows that this game, this game for instance is, you can see the GPU also is at 100% and our CPU is getting close to 100%. So neither one of them are really bottlenecking each other. They're paired very well actually. Okay, guys, we did a quick little tear down, put it back together, swapping out the cooler, made a huge improvement, 30 degree improvement. Thank y'all for watching the video, and I hope to catch y'all in the next one. Goodbye.